Hey, welcome to Prairie Lakes. Really, really glad you're here. Great job. You're starting your week off just right in a new season. Uh, so really, really good job. Hey, uh, before I dive into this week, I want to just get this excited and fired up for the next six weeks, okay? Um, we're doing a series called The Skeptic's Guide to the Bible. And this is for all of us, right? So there are some of us, all of us have questions, okay? There are some of us that are real skeptics and, and, and we got to go, I don't understand why is the Bible true and what about that part and what about this? <laughs> this, uh, this is made for you, okay? It is. And it's made for you to help your friends who are skeptics. So we're starting this next week. Man, get your book today at your campus. Um, get in the group. You don't have to be in a group. Once you be in a group, it's probably better in a group, but you can go through it. But it's fantastic. So I'm, we're really excited about that. Starting next week, The Skeptic's Guide uh, to the Bible. All right. So before we get there, <laughs> we're going to do something a little different this weekend. You know, I'm, I'm six decades long now, okay? And, and you know, when you get my age, and all of us experience this somewhat, right? So sometimes, like, you'll go downstairs at your house, or you'll go to the next room in your apartment, and you'll be like, what, what, what did I come in here for? Um, I, I do that. We all do that. It's no big deal. But, but I, I'm, the one that gets me the most is this one. I'll go to the refrigerator. We have one of the double doors like this. And I'll open it up, and I'll literally stand there and, and try to remember what I was going to get. Now, the good news about the fridge, it's a pleasant place to stand, okay? The light shining out on me, all the, the food arrayed in front of me. But here's what that does. It drives my wife insane. My wife is, is so um, efficient on, on things that opening the fridge for any longer than it has to be opened is like a sin. And, and, and so I'll do that and she'll see me and, 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 and without, without hesitation, she'll go, what do you need? What are you looking for? Can I help you? So here's what I started doing. I just walk in the kitchen like she's doing something over there. I'll just walk in and open the doors and stand there until she says something. I, I, sometimes I'll make a bet with myself. It's going to take three seconds for her to say, can I help you? Can I just get that for you? Is now her most famous line. Can I just get that? <laughs> right? So it's hilarious. But listen, forgetting things sometimes or, or kind, of, kind of losing focus, for the most part, it's no big deal. Okay? It's, it's, it's not. But losing focus, even though it can be pretty normal and pretty acceptable in a lot of areas of life, there's one place that it isn't acceptable, and that's this thing called the church. Because when the church loses its focus, it causes lots of pain. And when the church loses its bearing, a lot of people can lose their bearing too. And when the stakes are eternal, as we believe they are, the mistakes are eternal too. <laughs> you, you may have just started coming to Prairie Lakes. It's maybe your first weekend or, or, you know, the first few weeks or the first month. Or you may have started reattending, you know, after a time away. And some of you have been around a long time. And by the way, thank you uh, for that. But uh, here's what you need to know. You need to know who we are and what you're getting into around here. <laughs> you need to be reminded of who we are and what we're doing around here. I'm, I'm switching the seats soon, but the one thing that you can count on is this. We're going to be a no matter church, no matter what. Now listen, being a no matter church is personal to me. It's personal to me. I remember being disconnected from God and on my own. I remember what it's like to wonder if there's a purpose for my life. I remember what it's like to wake up feeling lost and alone. I remember what it's like to wake up going, what am I doing here and where am I? I remember that. And my friends, this is the, 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 the point of Jesus, right? The point of Jesus is he can bring hope and peace and freedom and forgiveness. And, it, and it's only through him. And we, we believe that to be true. We start with this fundamental premise at Prairie Lakes Church that Jesus came to seek and save the lost. We believe that Jesus changes everything. So around this place, we believe Jesus changes everything. That means he can change you. And that means he can change your friends. That means he can, he can, he can change your circuit. He, he can. We call the, the big changes the faith line, right? So when, when you and, and, and when I get sick of myself or you get sick of yourself and you finally say, I just can't do this anymore. 
and you're tired and the sin is weighing you down and, 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 and you're getting torn up on the heart, on the inside stuff. And when you finally just say, I can't do it anymore, and you finally say, Jesus, would you forgive me? Would you, can, can, can you take me, Jesus? And we call that stepping over the faith line. And when you, when you finally let go of the wheel of your life and you say, Jesus, I surrender. Here's the universal sign of surrender. I let go, I can't anymore. And if you'll make that decision, here's what we believe. We believe that Jesus can change everything. We, we believe that's what he came for. He came to seek and save the lost. Therefore, <laughs> we need to be the kind of church where you and your friends can find him and walk with him. So we better be a place that looks and, and acts like him. I want everybody in your Bible right now, just, just grab one. There's some on the chairs or the rows around you. Use your phone, this, uh, this app called YouVersion, Y-O-U, YouVersion, one word. Um, it, it's fantastic, but f- go, to, go to some Bible. With, we're going to have some on the screen, but I'm going to go to some so we can eyeball it ourselves. Everybody turn to Acts 15. Acts is the fifth book of the New Testament. Really easy to find, okay? And listen, don't be self-conscious about, like, I don't, I don't want to look like I'm lost. Listen, we're all lost, okay? So it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, okay? So you, you can find it. Go to Acts 15. Now, in, in Acts 15, there's this, just this spot, right? The, the, the Gospels tell the story of the life of Jesus. It begins with the, 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 the birth of Jesus, ends with his death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. But then Acts is, is like, okay, this is the launch now of Jesus going to heaven and then the launch of this thing called the church. And, and you get to Acts 15, and so the churches are being established all around that region of the world. And, and of course, problems are starting to crop up, right? Because you expect the church to be perfect. You, you, you're going to be mistaken. It's never going to be. <laughs> We're involved in it, so it's never going to be perfect. And, and it, there's, the Bible tells us that. It shows us that. So in Acts 15, there's, there's, this, there's this spot, and they, get, they start arguing about this, 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 this thing. And so all over that time, the apostles are telling people about Jesus, and people are starting to step over the faith line, and they're believing in Jesus, and their lives are being changed. He's fixing things in people's lives, right? And it's starting to happen. Well, when that starts to happen, there were some religious people, the, the Jewish people who were also Christians, but they said, hey, wait a minute. If you're going to follow this Jesus, he was a Jew, so you kind of need to be a Jew first before you can be a Christian. So here's what we think. And they began to come in and they began to teach people, no, 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 no. Before you can come to Jesus, you need to be circumcised or you need to do this, right? They wanted to put things in front of that and, and it started this argument. And so they, they, they were able to, to disagree and they were able to, to, to walk through this together. It's called the, the Council at Jerusalem. And and, and they got down to it, right? And all the apostles, they got to it. They, they, they sent Paul and Barnabas. They sent them back to Jerusalem to, to meet with the elders and the apostles. But when it gets to the end of it, this crazy thing happens. James, who was the leader of the Jerusalem church, right? This is just post-Jesus. He says this, It's my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. We shouldn't make it hard for, for people to find God. We shouldn't make it hard for people to, to, to look for God. And, and that guides us. And we think that's what the church should be. And we think that's what a no matter church is. So at Prairie Lakes Church, here's what you're getting into. Here's what no matter means. We say it every weekend but let's dig into it so everybody knows this. This is us. This is what we do because we think this is what Jesus is like and this is what the church ought to be like. Right? So here's the first one. No matter, right? so we say this, no matter who you are. Okay. So, so, so no matter who you are, no matter, you can walk into this no matter church called Prairie Lakes and, and you can look for God. No, no matter who you are, like what side of the tracks you're from, what the color of your skin is, no matter what your background is, no matter if you grew up in a nice home or a dysfunctional home, right? No matter who you are, male or female, rich or poor, no matter, you can look for God here, right? No matter who you are. I want you to, to turn to this, this, this story because... You know, we're good Iowans, right? And, and, and I haven't met many Iowans who say, yeah, I am just so lost. I hear a lot of Iowans say something like this. Oh, yeah, Pastor John. 
I, I believe in, you know, God and stuff. You know, I'm, I, I go to, um, and I've, I've had people like click their finger like nine times trying to think of the name of the church they go to. One time I was at, the, at a pharmacy and I was, you know, doing my thing and uh, talking to the pharmacist and, 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 you know, I'm always like wanting people to find Jesus, right? So talking and, 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 and she starts, she kind of starts talking about stuff. And I say, so what church you go to? And she goes, Prairie Lakes. <laughs> I'm looking at her. Oh, really? Do you like that place? Okay. How's the pastor? <laughs> so I went through this whole thing. She didn't know I was it. It was, it was classic, right? But, but, but here's the point. A lot of times in Iowa, we have people who just, you know, it's God and stuff, right? It's God and stuff. They're good people. They're not, they're not the worst people. They're not Hitler. They're not, they're not the worst people in the world, okay? We got one of those pictures in, in, in John here, okay? So everybody turn to, to John chapter 3. So you're in Acts. So just turn back just a little bit to go to John 3. And early, and in, in, this is Jesus' ministry, and, and there's this guy named Nicodemus, and he's a good guy, right? He believes in God and stuff, and he, he doesn't know what to do with this Jesus. He doesn't know. And, and here's what it says in, in, in chapter 3, John chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. And he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. And Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And, and look what happens. How can someone be born again when they're old? Nicodemus asked, surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born, right? So, so here's, here's what happens. Here's somebody who's trying to figure this Jesus thing out who, who can come and look for him and come and try to find him. And Iowa is filled with good people who are trying to figure this Jesus thing out. And we need to be a place where no matter who you are, you could be a really good Iowan who believes in God and stuff. You could be a knucklehead like me, right? Or think of the one dude in your group that's just a, just a knucklehead, right? No matter who you are, if this is a place where you can walk into and you can look for God, no matter if you're a male or a female, no matter what the color of your skin is, no matter what religious background you have you can look for him here so no matter first of all means no matter who you are you can look for god here okay here's here's the here, here's the, the the second one no matter who you are okay oh oh you know i'm sorry go back to that thank you i missed that one and this is like this premise of the new testament so later after the church gets established paul writes in galatians and then he says this right he says this there's neither jew nor gentile Slave nor free, there is male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And, and we have a culture that wants to divide, put everybody into camps, but this thing called the church is trying to pull everybody together and says, here's what unites us, here's what we have in common, not what divides us. No matter who you are, you can look for God here. Okay, good. All right, let's go to the second one. No matter who you are, or no matter where you've been. Where have you been? There's some of us who have found ourselves on roads or trails <laughs> or detours in our life that we just kind of go, how, 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 did I, how did I get here? I worked on, a, I worked on a, a, a ranch in Wyoming when I was in high school, and it was a real ranch. I mean, you, know, you can tell, right, cowboy, right? Got the vibe? <laughs> I wore my tennis shoes on the horse. So, so it was a real working ranch, and we literally went and rounded up cattle on horseback, okay? And this was inevitable. We did it twice in the summer. And this was inevitable. Here's what always happened. There, there'd be this, it was thousands of acres, right? So we'd, we'd kind of all go to one place and we'd, we'd all get on these horses and we'd kind of start rounding them up. And inevitably, most of them would be together. Most of them would be together. And then we'd get them rounded up and there'd be two or three that you're like, where are, where, where are the stupid cows? Where are they, right? And, and so we'd ride over the next hill, then you'd ride over the next hill and there down in the far corner, There'd be some big old cow just head down, munching. And you walk up and they're like, wow, what are you doing here? It's like, and they, they don't know where they're at. All they did was they just munched a little bit. And, and then they just followed their nose and they munched a little bit more. And then, hey, they, hey, that looks good. And they went a little bit farther. And pretty soon they ended up in a place away from everybody else. Kind of alone and a little bit afraid. 
It's the same thing with you and me. And same thing with the people in your little Iowa. Sometimes we just end up in a place. We just never thought we'd be. We ended up on a trail we never thought we'd get on. Everybody turn to Luke 15 with me. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. It's, this, it's just, just this teaching that Jesus gives. And, and, you know, he was always getting tested by, like, the religious people, right? They were always like, hey, what do you think about this, Jesus? And then they try to say something, try to trick him. And in Luke 15, there's three stories. But the first one is the one, I mean, they're all fantastic. I shouldn't say it, the first one I like the best, but I'm going to say it, the first one I like the best, okay? So here's what it says at the beginning of Luke 15. Remember, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, okay? Luke 15. It says, now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus. Let's just pause there for a minute. Just take note of this, okay? Talk about a no matter Jesus. It was the tax collectors, which was code for cheaters, <laughs> betrayers, right? And then just the flat out word sinners, <laughs> right? They were, they were, Jesus was in the middle of them, shining the light. That, that's what he was doing, okay? And they were gathered all around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees, the religious people, they came and the teachers of the law, they muttered this, they muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And they tried, this is like, this was like the ultimate cut down, right? Oh yeah, what kind of a Messiah is he supposed to be? He welcomes sinners and eats with them. <laughs> so then Jesus told them three stories, all with the same point. This is what God is like, is the point. In the first story, think about the cow. Then Jesus told him this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. And then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. And Jesus says, I tell you, that in the same way, there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who don't need to repent. My friends, not only no matter who you are, but no matter where you've been, some of us have wandered off and found ourselves on a trail we never thought we'd be. But you need to hear this about a no matter church. A no matter church says this, because this is what Jesus says, you can always come back. You've never wandered too far away. You can always turn around. Jesus never gives up. And why does that matter? Because as good as you and me try to be, we're still that one cow who follows his nose and his taste buds and ends up in a spot they never thought they'd be. You know, we can think about all our buddies or our friends out there who, boy, they really need no matter. Yeah, you know what? I need no matter. Because every once in a while I find myself on a trail that I just didn't know I'd, I'd be on. No matter who you are or where you've been, and here's the third one, or what you've what you've done. Now, with my group of buddies, um, and, and by the way, all of us who know Jesus, if you stepped over the faith line, you should have sprinkled in your relational circle um, friends who, who, who don't know him yet that you're, that you're working on, okay? We just, just, it's what we do, okay? It's what we do. Um, but in, in my circle, I, I have some that feel like they are disqualified for God, not starting point, right, from God first. They're disqualified that God doesn't love them. God couldn't love them because they haven't followed him and they don't want to be a hypocrite when they get in trouble and just come when they get in trouble. So they feel that way, but they also feel this way, that, that I, I've done so many bad things that if I walk into the church, um, lightning's going to strike or everybody's going to look at me funny or it's just going to be super weird. And, 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 and that's a real thing. It, it, it is. But you need to know this, but, but no matter church means not only who you are <laughs> or where you've been, but, but what you've done. You can pick your stupid mistakes, right? You can pick your stupid, 
your dumb decisions and your impulsive messes. Not one of them disqualifies you from coming to Jesus. Not one of them would Jesus look at and say, well, you know, I had you. I had you. I had your back all the way until that one. That was too far. <laughs> There's not such a thing. You can always come back to him. You, you can always. He died on the cross. And when he died, he didn't die for most of the sins. He didn't die for 99% of the sins. He died for 100%. Even the stuff that you've done. Even the stuff that you're carrying around. When he can forgive you, and he can set you free, and he can put you at peace, it's what he does. It's, it's who he is. There's lots of examples of this. I'm just going to go to one. Um, turn, to, turn to John chapter 4. You're in Luke now. Just, just go back one book, right? Go to John chapter 4. And in John chapter 4, there's just a, it, it's, it's kind of a seemingly innocuous encounter with Jesus because there's lots of these, right? Um, but this is when he talks with the Samaritan woman. And, and there's, just, there's the interesting part about this one. Um, there's lots of interesting part, but, but I want you to hear this part, okay? It says in verse 1, it says, Now Jesus learned that the, the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, and although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, which is a, which is a big point, right? Through Samaria, because the, the, the Jewish people and the Samaritans, they didn't get along, they hate each other. In fact, the Jewish people, when they traveled, when they traveled up through Israel, when they traveled north, they would, they would detour out of their way, make it a longer trip to go around this area of the country, you know, avoid that part of town because they just considered them bad, dirty people and they weren't going to go there. But he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria, which was crazy, called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town, it says, to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Pretty clear. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you'd have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank from it himself as did his sons and also his sons and, and his livestock? And Jesus answered, listen now, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But then he points at his chest and says, but whoever drinks this water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming to draw water. He told her, go call your husband and come back. Now, this is, this is now, this is it. I have no husband, she replied. And Jesus said to her, you're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is that you've had five husbands and the man you are now, and the man you have now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. My friends, hear this. No matter what you've done, we believe that Jesus can change everything. You may have a list of dumb decisions and stupid mistakes that you feel disqualify you for, for this God to love you. Your past mistakes do not limit God's love for you. Here, this is it. If you're tired of carrying it, and you're sick of it, you can literally say, forgive me, Jesus. And you can make the decision to say, I'm going to live my life differently. I'm going to live it for you. I'm going to let you drive instead of me. And it doesn't matter what you've done. He covers it all. It covers it all. Okay, so no matter, let's be really clear on this. No matter who you are, 
no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done. And here's the last one. No matter what's been done to you. No matter what's been done to you. Every single day in the Gospels, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the stories of Jesus, every single day Jesus encountered people who seemed to get the short end of life's stick. Blind, lame, lepers, the short end of the stick. Widows, orphans. Listen to this. Jesus is the only one who can take the unfair, unexplainable, sometimes even unexpressible junk and move it from victim to victor power of Jesus to those things meant to hurt you? Jesus is the only one who can take that, that, that most unfair, unexplainable, sometimes unutterable thing. And he can move it from being something that haunts you and turn it so that he can actually use you to help others. He can take the bad things and they can lead you to healing and your need for healing. Jesus is the only one who can do that. Listen, we can't explain why did that happen? Why did that happen? Why did that happen to them? Why did that happen to her? Why did them? Listen, we don't know, but it's been a part of the human existence because of the thing called sin. And what we know is it, just, it happens. It's a part of the bag. And what we know is this, that this Jesus says, no matter what's been done to you, even if it wasn't your fault, he can take that. And he's the only one who can do this. And he can move you from being a victim to being a victor. He's the only one. People always want to say, well, what, why, what, what's the deal? In John 9, there's this spot, right? In John 9, there's a spot where, where <laughs> let me read it. As he went along, Jesus, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, right? And here's the question, right? And, and this is where the world was kind of divided. Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents, that he was born blind, right? So somebody has to be at fault, right? Some, somebody, this, this poor guy, blind, whoa, somebody had to screw up. And Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this happens that the works of God might be displayed in him. There's just not answers for some stuff, friends. But here's what you need to know. You can take that, what's been done to you. And Jesus is the only one who can fix things. He's the only one who can change things. He's the only one who can turn things upside down. And we're going to be that kind of a church. We're going to be that kind of a place. That's what we are. So no matter, here's what no matter means. No matter who you are or where you've been or what you've done or even what's been done to you, God does love you. And you can look for God here. And I want to get really clear in the last couple of minutes, okay? Let's get really practical you're going to come to Prairie Lakes. Here's some stuff you just kind of have to, to know, right? Here are some implications of being no matter. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these, but this is, okay, this is what you're getting into. All right, here's the first one. It's messy. <laughs> okay, listen, it's just going to be messy, okay? It's going to be messy, and, and here's what you need to know about us. Here's what you know about Prairie Lakes, because this is what Jesus was like. We're always going to run to the mess, we're not going to run from it. We're not going to close our ears and, 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 and cover our eyes. And we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to run to the mess. We're more of a rescue mission than a country club. And rescue missions are always messy. And it was messy for Jesus. And it's going to be messy for us. And you may be against this, right? You may say, well, I don't want that mess. You know, you don't want it until it's you or yours. That's messy. And then you love it. Then you love it. So listen, it's messy. No apologies, it's messy. Here's a second one. It's complicated. Okay, now the answer isn't complicated. Jesus is the answer. We believe that Jesus can fix everything. We believe that Jesus can change everything. So, so the answer isn't complicated, but it, it's complicated in this world. Our doctrine isn't gray. <laughs> it, 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 it's not. But how we live it out in our world, it sometimes is. And if you can't see that, you're in a bubble. Church can no longer just have a nice building and sing some nice modern music and, and, and think that's, that's what's going to take. We have to bring Jesus to an increasingly shrinking world that clashes upon contact with each other. We used to be able to say, they're way over there. We don't have to worry about them. Nobody's over there anymore. We're all here. 
And when we're all here, here's what's happened. It's, it's complicated. We've got to live this Jesus thing out in a complicated world. And friends, we're not going to run from that. We're, we're just not. It's going to be messy and it's going to be complicated. Here's the third one. It's dangerous. Okay, it just is. We're going to get shot at from both sides. If you're going to be at Prayer Lakes, you're going to get shot at from both sides, just like Jesus did. You're going to have people on your team, you think on your team, who are going to shoot you in the back because they think that, that, well, you shouldn't be talking to them. And you're going to have people from the other side shooting you back thinking you're being really judgmental. It's just, it, we, listen, we just live it. It's the same way that Jesus lived. If you want to avoid talking about controversial stuff, then Prayer Lakes isn't your place. We can't afford that anymore. We live in a controversial, complicated world, and, and we, we, we're going to talk about stuff. If you want inch-deep answers to mile-wide problems, it's not your place. You're not going to fit around here. I just, you just need to know that it's dangerous to be a nomad or follower. It's dangerous to be a part of a nomad church. Here's the last one, but I want you to know this is so worth it. It is so worth it. There's no greater mission to be on. And to be a part of this, this church that says, we're going to dive into the middle of it. We are going to plant our feet and plant our flag where God put us. And we're going to carry this mission that Jesus loves you and he can change you and he can fix you and he can change things and he can, he can, he can, he can give you a do-over. He's, that's the only one who can and we're not going to run from that. It's worth it, friends. It's worth it. Because I I need it now, right? It's not just my knucklehead friends need no matter church. I need a no matter church. And you know what? That guy or that girl in your little Iowa and your little circle of friends, they need it too. And you know what? Someday, it might be your daughter or your son or your grandson or your granddaughter who needs a place where they can walk into no matter what and look for God and get loved on that's why we do what we do that's what Prairie Lakes is and quickly you got to hear this one too okay here's what we're not friends here's what we're not going to do we're not going to be swayed by culture and politics I, I know it's all the rage it's not going to happen with us this is what we stick with this is what we're getting swayed by Period. We're not going to be swayed by fear. We're not going to buy into these increasingly tactics, scare tactics across our world. You know what's really scary to our culture? People with hope. People with faith. <laughs> you, want to, you want to run from the scare tactics and stand on the hope that Jesus says, I got it, and someday I'm going to fix it all. Let's go until that last day's here. We got a job to do. And we're not going to leave out truth just because it's hard. Grace and truth, man. I'm not going to avoid this tough talk about sin because sin's a part of this thing, man. We're not going to take cues from secular or Christian culture. We're just not because both of them are wrong sometimes. We're not going to be afraid to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. We're not going to make it hard for people to come to God. And we're not going to lower the cost of following Jesus. You know, friends, uh, this is Prairie Lakes. This isn't going to change because the Bible isn't going to change and Jesus isn't going to change. And this is who we are. This is who we are. We're no matter church. We're becoming no matter followers of Jesus because we believe that Jesus changes everything. Let me pray for us right now. Everybody take a breath. Whew, I feel like I need a breath. So God, help us to be a no matter church. Help us to not just look in the mirror, but to look out the window. Help us to do both. Help us not be a comfortable church that bubbles up and becomes a safe country club. Help us to be the kind of church that's no matter. Not because they need it out there, God, but because I need it today, right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray, all of us pray together. Be ready? Amen.
Amen.